You may be asking yourself which fringe group of society you want to purchase your way into. Is it a Canon network? A Sony distraction? May I offer you a third contender, the Panasonic Pony of Hope team? They're the future. And some might ask, GH6, is that the better buy? 4K 120p over here, the HD 300, how? But it doesn't have phase detect autofocus of the Pennyboy S5 Mark II. Does it even matter? Mm, let's talk. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we got the Panasonic GH6 with the Leica 25mm 1.4 on your right side. Panasonic S5 II with the 20 to 60 kit lens to zoom in. Full frame. Yeah, shallow depth of field is a lie. Wow, the autofocus of the GH6 is superior. So I took both these cameras out on a wildlife extravaganza to an actual farm, local with interesting animals that aren't just mallard ducks and squirrels. Although I did see a squirrel on the horse's fence, I tried to get him. Now before we get into comparing all that extraordinary footage, you may ask yourself, okay, you got the Panasonic GH6, superior specs in every way, but tiny sensor and no phase detect. Is it worth it? to go to the Panasonic S5, now phase detect, but lower ended specs. 4K 60 with a crop? What? That does 5.7K 60, no crop. What the hell? If it was me right now, I just gotta be honest with you. The GH6 is superior in almost every way, but knowing that Panny Boy is now going phase detect, sell everything you own, Panasonic wise, and wait in the darkness. Just. Keep your lenses. I'm thinking I should keep the Leica 200mm Prime, sell the GH6, and then wait for a G9 Mark II or something, phase detect, animal eye detect, which we'll get to, works surprisingly good on Panasonic. I have to say, class leading. Freaking class leading. Not even believing that class. Oh, the autofocus is real. Okay, as the Panasonic twin sisters overlook our show here, it was not all fun and games starting out with the animal eye detect. I was like all excited about it. I was like, all right, let's go. Initially, I had a zone and it was struggling. That, was, that zone was like slightly encompassing those twigs. I was trying to move in between. I was like, come on, there's a squirrel right there, Benny boy. I had to switch to a tiny box and just keep it in and then it would detect what's in the box. But I noticed it hunted quite a bit in the initial phases of discovery. You can see it going in and out. I was at the highest sensitivity responsive with minus one speed and that was not the setting to be in. I find that setting was pretty good for vlogging and I was like, okay, that's my secret setting. Let's just stick with that. No. You know what's funny, we'll get to this, but 120 frames, the autofocus is much worse. But this somehow managed to just track this squirrel going through behind branches. Like, it didn't lose it once. I was like, what do you mean? Like, it's, I'm not even in any setting that should be working right now. It was just in a wide zone, asking the full sensor to detect an animal, and it detected all animals all the time. It was like, holy cow. Here's a runner who thought he could run off his Christmas dinner binges, and I wish him well in his endeavor. We're in 4K 60p, have a little autofocus box on him. It only lost him for a split second here. It got confused with the branches when he went in front. It was like, no, that was the only hiccup in that moment of sweet. But don't grab your ass, all right? Yeah, you're chafing, your pants are too tight. Like, why do you have to get in the runner's gear? Just wear jogging pants or something. So I just wanted to show you the initial phases of getting used to animal eye detect. I saw ducks, they were flying at me. I was like, I have time, I can do this. I pointed it at, I was like, okay, let's do it. All right, you're in. It was kind of doing it. I just, I sucked at keeping up with that flying duck. That was impossible. My box was not on the duck at all. Here's me also very successfully tracking the duck. You know what annoyed me about this? I pressed record when they were sitting. I was like, oh, they're about to fly. I pressed record. I was like, I'm getting all this. But with that record delay on the GH6, that takes like two seconds to start recording, it was almost over. 
Not that I tracked them good anyway. It was a bullshit shot I should have deleted immediately, but come on. Now here's where the GH6 is a little different. It's a little slower. You slow down and relax when you're using the GH6. You're not autofocusing. Although with these new settings that I found on the S5 II, maybe it'll even work on the GH6. So we have some wood ducks here. They're magical. Now this is not in any way, shape or form the same exact comparison here, but here's two wood ducks in the same creek and they're different lenses. We got the 200 mil Leica Prime for the GH6 versus a 70 to 200 zoom Tony 4. It's still more Tony's if you compare the equivalents. You know what I mean? This is actually about as close a comparison as you can get with these lenses. They're somewhat equivalent when you factor in like the 4K 60p crop in APS-C mode. Well, I don't know, like I, I feel like the GH6 looks a little nicer, if I'm being honest with you. Now here's where I dialed in the settings. I realized that it was hunting here. I was like, you know what? I think this responsiveness is not right. Let's get out of here. I put the settings all the way to locked on and still minus one speed. And then I found that it was just latching on to the animals. I know this is a sheep laying down, chewing cud while half asleep, but still, I, I couldn't track that manually if I tried. His brother over here, it was like, okay, I'll just nail that back of the head, no problem. Pretty good. Here's a sparrow up in a tree. I was like, okay, are you gonna track it? It's kind of funny because I have a tiny box on the bird, like almost any autofocus system should be able to do this, but it was tracking it within the box and it knew that an animal was there and it got it the whole time. It wasn't hunting around. There was like 10 other sparrows in the tree. I was like, this is actually pretty reliable. The only annoying thing is sometimes it would lose it and not even come close to regaining the focal point. I had to get into manual focus for this and then I just stayed there. Oh, hey, I'll see you later. When it comes to straight image quality of goats chewing the cud, GH6 has the 5.7K in 60p versus 4K 60. Mm, not bad. Penny boy victory for Penny one. If you're curious what 4K 60p looks like versus 180 frames HD on the S5 Mark II, there we have that. Interesting crops, I noticed. APS-C crop for 4K 60, but 180 frames per second is a 1.22 times crop, so 22%. And it can also do APS-C mode, which is a 1.85 times crop. But I feel like the GH6 just has those frame rates that we desire. I really do want to see a Panasonic S1H at least matching the GH6 specs with phase detect. Then you might have something. 4K 120p goat cud chewing is magical. The only thing more magical would be HD 300 frames per second. Goat chewing the cud magic. It's a, it's a long time for one bite, but I have time to wait. I have a lot of time actually. To show you how magical 300 frames per second is, that dog was blistering across my horizon at 4,000 feet per second, the fastest thing I ever saw. And then this other dog guarded the ball that he was after. He's like, no, your owner threw that ball to me. It's my ball now, it's mine. And I almost missed this wipeout. Oh, I suck at panning. Oh man, 300 frame per second dog wipeouts. Are you kidding yourself right now? But he, he brushed it off. He's like, <laughs> I messed up, oh, I messed up. But give me that ball, no. It's my ball. No. But that, my friends, is Penny Boy leading the industry with 300 frames per second. No one's really doing it unless you're into like weird black magic 12K cinema cams. And it's like, okay, we also do some high frame rates, but not really, not really. And it's really appreciated. Thank you, Penny Boy. Now, when it comes to the S5 II and its animal tracking abilities, I saw this goose looking thing and I was like, okay, let's see what you got, Penny Boy. I tell you, it just tracked the thing perfectly all over the place. I know it's not like running and like darting across my frame, but it's good. 
It's really good. Like, I'm telling you, I've tried several different systems. Canon R5 with Animal Eye Detect, the Olympus OM-1, and also the Fuji X-H2S. And all of them struggled pretty mightily, I must say. Whereas, like, this might be class leading. I, I haven't ever had it to where it was, like, usable. Whereas this, now that you have the settings locked on, little minus one speed, it's, it just gets it. The unfortunate thing is it's only 4K 60p. That kind of hurts. But like, watch as I pan around. I'm gonna go to the next goose. I was like, okay, get off this guy. What are you doing? This is boring. And latched. And then it latches onto him. Like you do have to keep him in a little box. I wouldn't trust like a full wide zone area to get it, but like, well done, Penny boy. Well done indeed. And watch this. You want to see a swan to goat pan? Oh, it's going to happen. Oh, it is happening right now. Oh my goodness. He just does it. Chewing the cud. So it is like 96% reliable. Like you can kind of trust it. You really can. And it really adds a new dimension to filming. Not that I can focus on composition because I have to keep that thing in a tiny box. It would be nice if I could widen that. I don't know, I just, I saw the birds hiding behind twigs and it was getting lost, so I panicked and I wasn't gonna use a, like a wide zone. But like in this situation, maybe it could handle the zone. It really makes me think that Panasonic could lead the industry one day. They have the tech, they just, they don't have the lenses yet. I, I wouldn't trust a Sigma to be doing this. So we're waiting for the Panasonic 200 to 600, something like that. 300 to 600, 24. That's lighter than the Sony. In this perfectly equal shot in identical lighting, two goose-like creatures realize that they're the same. They're the same one in the same lighting. And it's perfect. It's a perfect comparison. My God. I tell you, having that Leica Prime just brings the GH6 into full frame quality territory. And it's like, you're not really missing the quality, it's just Damn that autofocus, I feel scammed. Now that we know phase detect has been in the works for years and they didn't put it in the GH6, that really hurts. Now I wouldn't say it's perfect. Right now I have a box on the goat's head and it was jumping to the geese and the roosters in the back there. It just like, it kept latching on to them for some reason. So like, it has some quirks and you could do it with some firmware updates. With these ducks, it was hunting quite a bit. It was like latching on to that post of the fence in front of them. And it was just like hunting back and forth. It's not perfect in every situation, but it's usable some of the time. And I like those odds. Unless, however, you decide to try 120 frames per second where you now lose animal detection, but I still had a tiny box it just was not latching on to a damn thing. It was right on that gray one, and it ain't happening. And I almost missed this moment. This was the creepiest, freakiest thing. It hissed at me. It was like... <laughs> he did that to me, and Penny Boy almost missed it. It's kind of like not quite in focus. It's a little weird, but man... 120 frames, it would be nice if you had that perfect autofocus in 4K 120. That's the one area where I still feel like Sony and Canon are more polished. In all their frame rates, they have really good autofocus. So Panasonic now has it in 4K 60, but if you want to go slower, it's like, sorry. And then 180 frames is pure manual focus with a crop. So like they have some areas to be working on in the S1H2. And you better be working on it. I managed to get closer to this horse. He came over to the fence and he looked over at me. He's like, does Panasonic have face detect now? No way. Let me see that thing. You got, I never thought they would do it. Really? They did that? Wow, what lens are you using? 70 to 200. Oh, wow. How come they didn't send you the 70 to 300 that you asked for? Oh man, that was weird. You can zoom out and it does keep focus. Look at that. 
it's keeping it. I think it might have lost it for a second when I got to the end. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I imagined that. But I was like, not bad. Not bad. Then the horse decided to trick it. It's like, okay, so it's really good, even if I hide behind this thing? I'm like, yeah, kind of. It's, okay, stop. What are you doing? Okay, maybe not. And I was zoom, and I was like, it was struggling a bit in that scenario, but eventually it did get it. I was like, okay, it is working. No, maybe not. But it kind of did. And it was a magical moment I shared with a horse, and we'll always have that. I saw a cow in identical lighting scenarios again. He wasn't inside a barn for the GH6. I would never choose a low light scenario for Micro Four Thirds and compare it to a cow outdoors in the sunlight. I would never do that. They looked similar. It was very similar. And the cow licked himself and I zoomed in on it. I was like, hey, look at that. You're licking yourself. That is cute. Their potential for cuteness was there. So to wrap it up, it sucks that we have to choose between really nice slow-mo or nice autofocus. Right now that is the case. Eventually Panty Boy will catch up to itself and do both at the same time. I don't know if that's going to come in full frame first or micro four thirds. I don't know. The wheels of wonder are spinning, wondering, oh, should I get a Sigma 150 to 600 and wait for the S1H2? And Really, it's probably not even going to match my A7S III. I don't even need animal eye detect. You just, boom, it just gets it all the time. I feel like right now the GH6 is more of a filmmaker's camera. A manual focus delight, better frame rates, low light might not be your favorable option. But if you have light bulbs in your knapsack, eh, you might be better off with the GH6. I prefer it but it is nice to have nice autofocus. So like if I was just vlogging, I'd probably go S5 II or just YouTube life. Okay, we got good autofocus now, good stabe. Everything was good. I am curious to try the GH6 with those new autofocus settings. So we'll see what happens. 5.7K, 60P, animal eye detect. It could work, it might. It's not going to. So which camera are you buying through my affiliate links? the GH6 or the S5? You're not clicking them? Uh, it's a lot of work to copy and paste, come on. Reward a fella. So, decent. I hate them both. I'm gonna leave. Thank you for subscribing.